Welcome back, everybody, to the conclusion of our James Cam Marathon. That's pretty good, actually, yeah. I thought of that in the first episode, and it's in there if you listen really closely, Mason. <laughs> That's terrific. Good yeah. for you. Now, of course, in addition to leaving a like that people always do on these videos, we're doing the Road to Avatar 2. Mm -hmm. We took a look at the Abyss. A bit of piss, maybe? What? Was it a bit of piss? Oh, absolutely, yes, <laughs> sure. Yes. A man dunked his hand in a toilet. That's, and yeah. he had a toilet-stained hand for the entire rest of the movie. So, yes, it was a bit of piss. Uh, then we looked at Titanic, mm -hmm. 1997. Sure. And now we're taking a look at Avatar from 2009, Mason. Some would say the perfect precursor to Avatar 2. <laughs> Some would. And I wouldn't disagree. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so... I would say that I never loved this or even really liked it. And that's not to be like, ugh, it's got no cultural impact. Ugh, fuck you if you like it. Well, isn't it time? It's interesting because we are at a time of cultural reckoning because... <laughs> what have we done? That's right. That sounds bad. We're going to cancel everyone <laughs> yeah. and then ourselves. But, you know, this, this movie came out in 2009 mm -hmm. and so a lot of people would be re-watching it for the first time in a decade or perhaps watching it for the first time you know, younger people watching it for the first time with fresh eyes. I haven't seen this movie since 2009. Yeah. And so now it is time for everybody to sort of get together and rewatch it and go, <laughs> is this anything? Is this anything? Yeah. It's 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 Schrodinger's cat person. It's uh, <laughs> Sure. In a lot of ways, we don't know if it's good or not, <laughs> I think. I, I still feel a bit like that. I think, though, you can't discount that it's an absolute technical marvel. Like it's still, it still looks incredible yeah. despite being, you know, 10 plus years old. And I, and I cannot dispute the box office no. uh, returns. You know, I saw it once in 2009 and to the best of my recollection, never again. You but saw it in a JB Hi-Fi when you went in and they tried to sell you a big TV. Yeah, and yeah. it's on every TV. And I'm like, but I already have a sort of big TV. And they're like, <laughs> you should get more bigger TVs. More and bigger TVs more with bigger. JB Hi-Fi. But like untold millions of people saw it multiple times. Yeah, exactly. Making it one of the uh, most popular films of all time. And... Uh, mm. But I, I was never compelled to go back. No. Now we're forced to come back by That's the algorithm. Right. I'll say this, Mason. I think all the goose and the water and the foliage, all the little wet dogs running around. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. It's There's never a second where you're like, this is not a real jungle, despite it for the most part. What about when Jake Sully goes to uh, touch some plants and they go, foom? What about, <laughs> what about then? Yeah, Did that I, break your immersion? No, I'm, when they all went, foom, I'm foom, caught foom. up in the moment, Mason. I'm okay. caught up in it. So, no, it doesn't bother me. But I think the, the balance of having the natural elements of this world being close enough to Earth but also slightly foreign in a lot of ways means you can sort of relate to it and believe it and not be like, Ugh, this is garish and I don't like it. That's I think it could have tipped over into two neon or I know they were going to go with a blue jungle at one point. And I think even that mm -hmm. would have been way too much to look at for this yeah. long. Mm. That's interesting because I s started rewatching this for the first time and I'm like, okay, all right, getting on board with this. I'm liking this sort of, you know, sort of a military industrial aesthetic. I'm liking this. I'm loving the ships. They do look real. We're seeing, you know, a protagonist, Jake Sully. He's in mm -hmm. a funk. He's grown... Uh, a greasy hipster hair, hasn't he, James? Disgusting. The gross. <laughs> How far this man has fallen. <laughs> uh, we're seeing, you know, the, the various machinations of all the human characters. We're, we're, we're planting the seeds of just, you know, all these people that are going to get theirs, obviously. You know, your, your Giovanni Rabisi is this kind of... Uh, no, he just kind of, like, slumps his shoulders and gets onto a plate at the end. He's like, mm. <laughs> He doesn't get skewered. Yeah, but that's the ultimate comeuppance for a really rich executive type. <laughs> they go, I didn't get exactly what I wanted. And we in the audience are like, hooray! The best we can hope for. <laughs> He'll probably get a promotion regardless. Yeah. <laughs> but then I think it's when Jake Sully wakes up in his avatar body. Yeah. And at that point, I'm just like, I'm not right about this. Yeah, they're just—it's the uncanny valley, and we, you know that's oh, been, really? okay. it's been talked to death, I think. But these, from a technical standpoint, all of this is incredible. And you know, the—is it a design thing for you? Do you think maybe? I think it's the mouth movements. Okay. In in retrospect, but I remember you saying at the time. Oh, you were like, this, will, this is going to be great because I don't remember anything I said at the time. You're going to get cancelled for this, by the way. Oh no. That you were impressed by the teeth. You're like, good teeth though. No, I don't think I said that. No, I 100 percent remember oh, you saying okay. good teeth because looking at this now, I was, I was like, he was right about those teeth. Okay. They'll still sure, be looking sure. good. All right. Yeah. Okay. Well, then maybe it's the lip movement that I don't care. It for. might just it's be something in that lip teeth tongue matrix sure. situation there. But I I don't know. I think they're just too close to being human without being human and it set something off in my brain that made me go, I don't want to see this for another decade at least. <laughs> <laughs> we, we talked about this when we talked about Titanic, I think. Yeah. Titanic is a, you know, wonderfully produced 
movie that that looks incredible and brings you back to another time but you know to the bare bones of it it's just a a fairly simple romantic yeah. drama premise and this is kind of the same the, the world does look amazing but it is just kind of you know as people say it's pocahontas and well, exactly. etc jake sully is brought into this mix of uh, of the of this you know this this military corporation and then he's brought into this world of, of beautiful soulful native people and there's scenes where he's uh you know he's he's strategizing with the military types and they're like yeah we're gonna get those when you get those navi we're gonna we're gonna steal their stuff we're gonna get them and jake sully's like yes <laughs> and i think <laughs> i'm on board with this i'm not gonna turn at any point of course he is come I, on I, I i think look similarly for me i want to be like swept up in this mm. world in the way that I know so many people are. I want I want to be caught up in like the emotion of it and the romance and fall in love with the creatures and the people and all of that and look at all the shiny trees and rocks. You sure? I, I look at this for the most... Put that on the poster. Yeah. Look at all the shiny trees and rocks. I mean, there's obviously that moment where they, they go to a region of the, of, the, of the world where there are just giant... Uh, floating mountains floating and stuff. Floating mountains yeah. and stuff. And that was pretty incredible. Yeah, but that's the thing though. I look at this and I don't feel anything mm. and i don't think it's because it's artificial i think a big part of it is that i don't like jake sully okay and i don't necessarily think this is a performance thing but just the way he kind of rolls into a new environment and he's just like poking stuff he's like what's this and he's pointing his gun and he's yelling at creatures and he's just a moron okay and I, I just and like you said though he's also so transparently stupid that you know that he's going to turn. Okay. But, but I didn't say transparently <laughs> stupid. You put that word in my mouth. Like the, that thing that I said about the teeth that I didn't say. But the fact that he that he walks into this environment in this body that's probably worth a billion dollars plus and just nearly immediately burns it. Just nearly immediately just wrecks this piece of technology. Because he's just a moron. Like he's, And I just, I don't. I don't like him. I don't believe him. I don't like it when he gets their big tree shot down. And then he's like, you had to know that I knew this was going to happen, but I was here to tell you that you should move. Mm. What do you, what, what do you mean? That's not an excuse. Would you say that it is similar to the plot of the movie Armageddon? Where they send, uh, what is it, drillers? What, who are they? What yeah, are the guys? Okay. Yeah, uh, they're oil drillers or whatever. No, yeah, to to do the job of, uh, of of scientists. Yeah. Is it that it doesn't make sense that they would get this guy in yeah. when they could have... Just because the, the, the Na'vi body, the Avatar body was expensive and he shares DNA with his brothers, wouldn't it make more sense that a multi-billion, trillion dollar corporation that runs stuff around the entire galaxy yeah. would just build another body and, and, and have it controlled by somebody who might act appropriately for the situation. I completely agree. And I think, but at the same time, they also demonstrate why that's not a good idea because he's like the best guy on the planet. Mm. But I think the reason that he is- Yeah, it kind of worked out pretty well for him, didn't it, James? Yeah, well, that's the thing. Egg on your face. Yeah, but I think- Alien Navi egg on your face, probably blue. I think the reason- Or green, different colour than a regular egg. But I think the reason he's the best guy on the planet is because he's so empty headed and he just runs into environments without thinking. Mm. Like, you know how he gets the big red bird and uh -huh. that's really impressive. I think anybody who's got the big red bird, that's anybody who's stupid enough to attempt it. Sure. Because a normal person <laughs> wouldn't do that. Yeah, right. And I think also if I got the big red... What are chosen ones at the bottom of a chasm? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> But I think, I think I'm probably the chosen one. I reckon I get that bird, the big red bird. I reckon, <laughs> easy as just jump on and put my put my hair thing in its neck or whatever. <laughs> easy as, mate. I think if I got the big red bird, also mm -hmm. I would just tell everybody how to do it. Oh yeah, you just go above the bird. Like <laughs> I don't think it's really that much of an ancient mystery. I guess the trees like him or whatever. It's more an angle thing. It's more about <laughs> trigon it's, it's more trigonometry. It's more than trigonometry. Anything. Yeah. You know, should have got that other nerd to do it then. He well, could have figured it out. I don't like the other nerd either because, okay, to be fair though, Jake Sully should have read literally anything about this world that he's going to. Mm -hmm. Because there's so many moments where he's like, what's the big floating mountains? And the guy's like, what are you, an idiot? You don't know the big <laughs> floating mountains? Oh, you're here to interact with the Navi, are you? Uh, name five of their sacred rituals. <laughs> yeah, he's a weeb, basically. He's a weeb for this fucking planet. So I don't like him either, though. because he's. Who just... do you like in this movie? I like... Uh, I like Giovanni Ribisi because he's slimy. Yep. I like Sigourney Weaver. Take yep. no prisoners. Gets out of the pot, immediately starts smoking. Love yep. it. I like Zoe Saldana. I like the dude with the big scar down his face. Oh, I big like scar him. face, sure. Yeah, I like all of that. <laughs> I like Michelle Rodriguez. She's in this. She is. I'd forgotten, but she is, yes. <laughs> I don't know. I just think 
He's just really unpleasant and stupid, and he just he he's got a complete lack of self awareness. I don't know, and it, I just I just don't like him, and I don't know why the trees like him. Mm. I don't get it. Right, uh huh. Because they can twist him, I guess. I guess that's why they like him. You know, because they can make him do something. Yeah, sure. I don't know. Jump on the big red bird. Just jump on the bloody big red bird, <laughs> mate. You can do it. You're probably the show's one. Give it a crack. Give it a crack, mate. And if you fall off and fall into a chasm, no big loss, I reckon. Here's something that takes me out of this. Okay. Some of the creatures have the exact sound effects of dinosaurs from Jurassic Park. And I know you probably don't remember that, but that is incredibly distracting to me to I be bet, like, yeah. that's a T-Rex or like whatever. Like it's the same sound file. It's literally the same. Is yes. that because James Cameron borrowed those from Spielberg or is it because they're just stock sounds? Probably an ILM thing or whatever. Uh, yeah, I have good no point, idea. Actually, yeah. That being said, I think there's so many things that this does well in terms of even just like execution of action. Cause I think there are some action sequences and the flying and all of that is, is, is really solid stuff because they basically film this in a virtual environment which hadn't been done before like you basically got the actors in mocap suits are you about to explain green screen to me no no it's not green screen you've got them in mocap suits and you're looking at them through a monitor and this is the first time where you see them as an avatar person Uh and then you can watch them jump across a plant or or whatever okay and that's (laughs) how are we gonna get over this plant (laughs) what i know (laughs) we've done it (laughs) and now the tree likes me i think yeah uh (laughs) yeah Wow. Do you think there's a lot of busted takes where everybody in their ping pong ball suits is just looking over at the monitor being like, where am I right now? I'm, like, oh, I'm in a forest. I'm in a fo- Cut. You're fired and I'm going to find a way to drown you. I guess we, we need to talk about also uh, the 3D element of this, which obviously is lacking now if you're watching it on a regular TV. Unless you're the one guy who bought a 3D TV. I did have one, but it was by default, Mason. It just came with my TV and I oh. turned it on once and went, hate this. But I remember... Get a load of this guy. <laughs> oh, my steak came with caviar. It just comes with that. I don't know. Like it was a standard feature, rest, Mason. Restaurants I go to. You know. It was standard oh, at the boy. time. Wow. But it wasn't good. Wow. Didn't even fit in the back of my Bentley. I, I remember the first sequence where he slides out of the pot. And I remember seeing that in the movies and just seeing all the depth of the background and thinking to myself, wow, that's really impressive. Mm-hmm. And then either forgetting about the 3D element of it or finding it distracting. Uh But I think this is still probably the best use of that. But it certainly wasn't worth it for just four to five years of very average movies being post-converted into 3D. Like, did I want to see Resident Evil Retribution in 3D? You did, so that's a bad example. (laughs) Give us another one. I don't have another one. Okay, right. How frustrating was it, though? I just remember at the time being like, you're going, okay, can I do the non-3D? Oh, there's no non-3D? Okay, so i got to pay extra to see this movie in a way that I don't want to see it. Mm. And I know James Cameron... Thank you for letting me pay $25 for a headache. Thank you, I appreciate that, actually. (laughs) And I know also James Cameron is now looking for a way... And I think he would have done it if the technology had have caught up to have 3D without glasses. Mm. Oh, that's called a real life, James. <laughs> that's, Jim, that's Jim, ca- if I can speak to you for a that's moment. That's called going to the theatre, Mason. <laughs> that's called a touching grass, Jim Cameron, <laughs> which you don't know anything about. No. Because that's not it's not your whole deal. No, your it's deal really is, not. It's in the water. Yeah. <laughs> I think, though, towards the end of this movie, and I watched it over three days, uh, <laughs> so I split it up. As James Cameron intended. Yeah, I just... Have people seen the uh, the uh, recent interview with James Cameron where uh, someone asked him, uh, when's a great time to leave Avatar 2 for a pee break? And he said, any time you want, because you can watch that scene again when you come back. Mm. Bold. And I will, Mason. Okay. Well, right. to be fair, I saw Avatar 1 twice at cinemas because oh. I saw it and I went, I, I was jet lagged when I saw that because I'd just come back from an overseas trip and I went, I don't think I got it. Mm-hmm. I'll go back. And then 10 minutes in, I went, no, I got it. This <laughs> is <laughs> not, not for me. So I, I will say, though, I was invested in the ending and, and the big battle. Mm. But the I, big battle is, big. Un, it's undeniably huge, yes. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. You're not going to deny the sheer scope and scale of it, Mason. No, nah, there's freaking things flying all over the place. Wasn't there just? It's fire and that. <laughs> yeah. Stuff exploding. You tip the ship, like in True Lies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Remember that bit? Mech guys. Well, here's the thing. It's a mech versus an alien, like in the movie Aliens, but it's reversed because the alien is the good people. Doi-oi-oi-oi-oi-oi-oi-oi-oi-oi-oi-oi-oi-oi-oi-oi-oi-oi-oi-oi-oi-oi-oi-oi-oi-oi-oi-oi-oi-oi-oi-oi-oi-
heroes. <laughs> oh, it's the classic. Uh, it's the classic transporter question. Exactly. When someone is transported in Star Trek, are they moved body and soul to a new location, or is the original body torn into its component <laughs> molecules and tossed across the universe? And then when they're put back together, it's just a completely different guy, and the original's dead. Yeah. I think the second one. I agree. No, I think it's a soul thing. Yeah? Yeah. You think it's, it's a soul thing? Because it's dude? the tree and the thing and the magic. I don't know, because the way they talk about the technology of this universe, or the magic, mm-hmm. is that it's a big internet. Remember Sigourney Weaver's like, this tree's an internet, you don't know nothing. And mm. Johnny Rivera. Yeah, but she didn't have a full understanding of the tree. And you do? Yeah. <laughs> Okay, I've seen this movie twice now. Yeah, yeah, I guess you do know what's going on with. This okay, show. well, maybe it's maybe it's more accurate to your theory. And in the second one, he'll just be every thirty seconds, he has to stop what he's doing. He has to stop the hunt with the Navi because he has to remove pop ups from his field of vision. <laughs> it's got malware. It's like one of those news sites you open. There's a there's an auto playing video in the corner. Where's the X to get rid of it? I can't. And he, and you know he's like, I, I just want to do this ritual, but I've looked it up, and there's a huge backstory at the start of it. Oh, you know what I would love mm-hmm. if in any of these sequels, there's original Jake Sully who didn't get transferred over. Oh, you and think he's got his greasy hair back? Yeah, and he's gone he's sad. He's gone evil because he couldn't live with the trees or whatever. That's pretty good. Yeah, I, like I like that. I like that a lot. Mm. I like that idea that I have. Mm. I'm good. And I know what I'm doing. Mason. Yes. Is it time for green trivia and when that guy shouts Rodney? Yes. Rodney! 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 Director James Cameron, now you know this more than anybody, Mason, he's known for being tough on set, and he allegedly... Do you think I know that better than anyone, or, or any of the <laughs> actors he's worked with, or crew members? I think you have a fair understanding, but maybe not as much as the people he tried to drown. Yes. Yeah. Uh, but he allegedly kept a nail gun on set that he would use to nail cell phones that had the misfortune of ringing to a wall uh, above the exit sign, so your phone goes off. Wow. And, yeah. I think he just wants to work at one of those, you know, those bars where everybody's rude to the customers. <laughs> And if you come in with a necktie, I'm going to chop that necktie off because if this place is that it's we're here to work, we're also here to party. <laughs> Imagine but you're a, you're one of his assistants. You have to go down the hardware store to buy a nail gun. Yeah, this is James Cameron. Yeah, he's going to nail people's phones to the wall. <laughs> is he allowed to? No, but he uh, <laughs> but he's, he's doing it. <laughs> so director James Cameron also took the cast and crew to Hawaii, where they spent their days trekking through the forest and jungles in order to get a better sense of what it would be like to live and move around in the jungles of Pandora, since those real physical sets, Mason, they didn't even mostly exist for the most part. There wasn't even big sets. Whoa. They built some jungle, but it mostly wasn't any jungles, Mason. However, the cast and crew spent their nights at the Four Seasons Hotel. (laughs) Typical (laughs) Hollywood, Hollywood. Mason. Typical Hollywood soft-handed. That's right. Just dainty-wristed. More like Hollywood. Swanning about. Mm. Don't like it. Maseratis all day. Um, I've just got a note here that says Blue Harvest. Do you know oh, anything yeah. about that? I don't know anything about that, no. Isn't that the working title of the original, oh, the original Star, Star Wars? Wars? Yeah. yeah. Okay, there we right. go. Uh, before we talk box office, though, this last bit of green trivia is that this was the most pirated film of 2010. It had 16.58 million downloads on BitTorrent. <laughs> Which also goes to show that piracy doesn't necessarily affect a movie's box office performance. Because a lot of times people... Pirate movies, it seems, and this is from research, uh, when they're probably not going to see it anyway. That's true. Not always, not exclusively, but I don't know about you, but I will happily pay for something if you just make it available. Sure. Yeah, just make sure I can have it. I can get it. Well, I'm the opposite. I will only pirate something if it is available. (laughs) Okay, good. Yeah. Yeah. If it's not available, I just stamp my feet. I'm like, where is it? I want it. Yeah. Yeah. Box office, though. Uh, now, James Cameron, again, like he did on Titanic, he forgoed, forgoed, he forgot it, his mm-hmm. fee. But it blew way out of proportion. He forwent his fee? Yes, because of all the emerging technology which they pioneered and used for this, which I also don't think I've highlighted enough. This is just an amazing tech demo of what is possible in virtual cinema and spaces. Mm. This made the movie Tintin possible, which from what I've heard, people seem to like that. I haven't seen it. <laughs> but imagine the world of Tintin. Terrific. <laughs> Captain Haddock is there. Yep. Little dog. There's Snowy. Those, there's two guys or whatever. Johnson and Johnson. But they're not they're not twins, are they? Or no, brothers? It's Thompson and Thompson. Is it? Yeah. Those are the shampoo. But they're spelled different. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so yeah, it cost two hundred and thirty seven million dollars. Again, mostly because it was pioneering so much of it and it took like five years to make. Though he first had the idea in like the mid nineties and couldn't mm. do it for, you know, obviously. Doctor Calculus. Oh, also, very good. Also in, in Tintin. Oh, Doctor mm-hmm. Calculus. Yeah. But it made as a result of re-releases, 
$2.92 billion. Huh. It made $2 billion in its first 35 days. So initially, this wasn't like a huge hit as soon as it went to cinemas, but it built. Incredible word of mouth. Yeah. I don't, I don't know. Maybe. They gave me glasses. I kept them. Yeah. They said put them in the bin at the end. I kept them. Maybe you'll be swept away. I, I wasn't. <laughs> maybe some, somebody, well, the poster says you'll be swept away. I wasn't, but maybe you'll be swept away. I wasn't. Yeah, I wasn't. <laughs> to be clear, I was not swept away. I've seen I'll, it again. Yeah, because maybe this time you swept away. <laughs> but I wasn't. The first time I was. Maybe you will be. I would like to know if people were swept away though, genuinely. Hey, wait a sec. I looked at this poster and it says, maybe you'll be swept away. <laughs> and you weren't. Yeah. Oh, no. There's a picture of me. How's he doing this? So, yeah. So this, not pioneered, but it really solidified. And this is also after like Lord of the Rings that December is a key window to open in for a blockbuster because you've basically got a clear run to like February. That's true. And this definitely had that. It was also bolstered by 3D because tickets were more expensive, which obviously makes sense. You've probably heard this story also, Mason, about Matt Damon, how he was offered the role. Oh. So he was offered 10% of the movie's income Ah. if he took on this role, which I'm pretty sure that Sam Worthington wasn't offered. I'm pretty confident. Interesting. Okay. I'm pretty confident. Okay, but was was Damon offered 10% of the gross or 10% of the net? Because as I understand it, in a lot of instances, they're like, we'll give you 10% of the profit. Oh, we didn't make any profit. That's weird. You owe us money. Yeah, that's right. I mean, we made we made two point nine billion dollars, but the parking was really expensive. So actually, we didn't make <laughs> we didn't make anything. Well, apparently, he would have made about two hundred fifty million dollars. Okay. So, however, that works. But no, he was committed to the Bourne franchise at the time. But look, I'm sure he made up for it in crypto scams or whatever. Mason, Mason. Yes, I'll- I'm tut tutting because you didn't give me the chance to also make that joke. <laughs> oh, really, <laughs> James. <laughs> James, please. <laughs> please leave a pause so I could say that instead. <laughs> now, uh, I'd love to know what people think of this movie, though. And you know what? I just, I want to be... In- Swept away. I want to be invested in this. Mm. I really want these sequels to be good because I-, I just feel like there's so many elements of this and I like James Cameron as a filmmaker that I, I just, why can't I be swept away, Mason? Great Why point. not me? Because you're dead inside. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. yeah. Anyways, Mason, did you know? You, you know this, actually. Is it about Matt Damon? No. Okay. Did you know that this is the last Caravan of Garbage for the year, unfortunately? Whoa. Now, we are going to be taking a break until about late January. There's still going to be stuff going up on the channel, including new videos until the end of December. But if anyone has any requests for what they want to see next year, leave them below because there's a lot of movies. Yeah. And I'm looking at them and we haven't maybe even hit 50% yet. Right? Yeah. And we've been barely swept away by any of them, quite <laughs> frankly. And look, if you're out there and, and you're you're a big fan of something and you want to tell us all about it, that'd be terrific. But if you, you're out there and you're not a big fan of anything, but you are massively tapped into the like SEOs and algorithms and stuff, and you know about a property that we can we can analyze and get a million views on. Yeah. That would be great also. That's what we want, yeah. actually. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. right. Fans of stuff, get out of here. <laughs> big algorithm nerds, let us know. <laughs> But before we take a break, though, our podcast, The Weekly Planet, where we talk movies and comics and TV shows, we are going to cover Avatar Too Many Waters. Ooh. Yeah. So that's going to be our upcoming episode. And in addition to that, you can actually hear that early on Sunday as opposed to Monday, including seeing videos like this early, including bonus podcasts, including movie commentaries. If you head over to our private Patreon at bigsandwich.co, which is also legally distinct from Patreon, that's isn't it, That's exactly right, yes. We haven't been threatened yet, but it's good to get ahead of it, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. We don't have a crypto money. We don't have that. That's true. To, to protect ourselves. But I just want to say a big thank you to everybody for supporting us this year. Mm-hmm. Again, there's still videos going up before the end of the year, including that's right. the biggest bombs and hits of the year. But uh, we really, really appreciate it because it means that we can both do this mm-hmm. and have and earn somewhat of a living from it. That's terrific, isn't yeah. it? Big, big time thanks for everybody who watching these videos. Click and like. That's right. Click and, and subscribe. And big time thanks to both Ben and Lawrence who edit these. That's right. Because that can't be very fun, I'd imagine. Absolutely not. All right, thanks everybody. Grab that gem, you guys. Merry Christmas, if I can even say that these days. No, you're under arrest. Oh my God, well, happy holidays. Tim Allen's coming to get you. No! No, or to save you? What, what does he think? I can't remember. I don't care what he thinks. <laughs> <laughs> See you next year, bye. Uh, but still towards the end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. More don't, don't leave, don't yeah. ever leave. And there'll be yeah. stuff going up regardless. Just like, watch old videos and imagine we're still around. But there's also going to be compilations yeah, of stuff yeah, yeah, going yeah, yeah, up, yeah. so don't even worry. Yeah.